Happy morning. Please pardon me if I'm uh, coughing. But don't worry, I don't have COVID. <laughs> All of a sudden, my, my throat just got itchy. But I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So, everybody can hear me okay? All right. Yes. Again, good morning, church. How are you today? Good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you all again for the warm welcome. Um, I'm still looking at the plaque of, sort of plaque of welcome, the plaque that you gave me last Saturday. Every, every day I look at that. And you know what it reminds me? It reminds me about happiness, blessedness. I'm so blessed that I have you all. As uh, Brother Carlos and Brother Kennedy, we were talking a few days ago, we we're talking about family. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I want to, can I ask you, can you tell your, the person beside you, God bless you? <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. You know, we will be doing this often. <laughs> so bear with me. <clears throat> now, um, can I ask a personal question? Well, you can just answer it in your mind. Okay. Are you happy? You can just answer it in your mind. But I guess all of you are smiling. So I guess you're happy. That's good. That's good. And uh, can you tell again to the person beside you, God wants you to be happy. Brother Kennedy, God wants you to be happy. No one beside you. <laughs> God wants you to be happy. Now, now today, we will start a, uh, a series of lessons. A series of lessons about happiness. Okay? About happiness. So, finding true joy. Okay? And today, we, it will be our part one of our series of lessons about happiness. Now, do you know that God wants you to be happy? Do you know that? Do you know that God wants you to be happy? You know, from time immemorial, since God created this world, you know, God always wanted his creation to be happy. You and I. You see, before God created Adam and Eve, you know what God did? You know, he created everything first. He puts everything first before Adam and Eve. You know why? Because God wants Adam and Eve to be happy, to be joyful, to have everything that they would ever need. Okay. You know, uh, what God did after he created Adam and Eve, he blessed them. He blessed them. Just after creating them and creating everything, God blessed Adam and Eve. God gave them his favor. All right? God gave them his favor. And the word blessed in the Hebrew, Hebrew language, it is called Barak. And I know you're familiar with the name Barak, right? It is called praise or favor. Okay? Now, do you know when you say God bless you to someone, just like what you did a while ago, do you know when you say God bless you to someone, you are invoking God's favor. To that person. When you say to your you know, to someone, God bless you, you're invoking God's favor to that person. Now, can I encourage you, my dear brothers and sisters, can I encourage you to think about this and do this? You know, when you say God bless you to someone, do it mindfully, do it intentfully. Because you know, when you say those words, God bless you, you're actually 
It is an act of your kindness with the thoughtful intention of making another person's life increasingly happy in all aspects of life, which God, it says there, can only give. Okay? So you acknowledge that God can only give that person true happiness. So that's why when you say to a person, God bless you, you are what? You are, you know, it is an act of your kindness and you are invoking to that person, you want that person to be happy. In all aspects of life, you are invoking to that person God's favor because you knew or you know that God can only give through happiness. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, of course, you know, you can bless someone. You can bless someone. How? You know, you can bless someone, you know, by, by giving them something, by giving them favor, by helping them. But those things are only temporal in nature. Those things are just temporary. You know, temporary. And I used the word happy a while ago because the other term for the word blessed is what? There you go. Happy. Are you happy? It doesn't look like. <laughs> now, happy, it is called usher or Asher. And uh, it is called happy. Now, we can read this in Psalm chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed or happy is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Now, in the New Testament, the word blessed is called makarios. I know someone in the Philippines named Makario. Yeah. And I've learned that his name is actually blessed or happy. In the Beatitudes, you can read blessed are. In other translations, it means happy are. Okay? So blessed and happy are actually synonymous. So in the following verse that we're going to read, God made it clear that he wants you to be happy. In John chapter 15, verse 11, Jesus said, I have told you this thing so that my joy and delight may be in you and that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. Get that? Overflowing. Okay? Now, what does Jesus mean when he says that my joy and delight may be in you? What does he mean? That my joy may be in you. It means that Jesus' joy is in us. We are part of his joy. And his joy is by giving us a good life that will make us happy. Okay? A good life that is pleasing to God. You know, that is joy. You know, Jesus Christ is enjoying giving you what you want. Jesus delights in making us happy. Now, to better understand, who amongst you here have children? Raise your hand. Oh, all of us. Most of us have children. Oh, Brother Kennedy, let me ask you first. Because you're in the front, second room, close to me. Yeah, you have children, right? Now, when you give your children what they want, does it make them happy? Yes? Then when you give them what they want, does it make you happy? Yes. All right. Who else have children? Who else have children? Who else? Brother Todd. Brother Todd. Brother Todd. Now, same question. When you give your children what they want, does it make them happy? Yes. Does it make you happy? Exactly. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell us. When whatever we want, when Jesus gives us what we want, it makes us happy, right? And when we are happy, Jesus is happy. 
That's why Jesus said that my joy and delight may be in you. You get that? Your joy, Brother Kennedy and Brother Todd, your joy is in your children because you make them happy. You give them what they want. Well, not exactly all they want, but the things that they make them that makes them happy. So same thing. Jesus, by giving us the things that we need in life, it makes him happy because it makes us happy. Are you happy? Yes, you are happy. Yes. So our joy is in our children. Jesus' joy is in us by providing what we need, what you need. Now, there's a proof. Here's a proof. Look at this. Jesus said, I have told you these things. You see that? Jesus said, I have told you these things. Now, what are these things? What are those things that Jesus is talking about? If you will read John chapter 15, beginning from verse 1 to verse 10, it talks about the vines and the branches. Right? If you will browse John chapter 15, verses 1 to 10, he is talking about the vines and the branches. Okay? Now, Jesus wants us, we are the branches, okay, to be always remaining in him because if we remain in him, now listen to this. If you remain in him, if you continue to remain in him, if you remain in me, Jesus said, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Aha, aha, there you go. Okay, there you go. That whatever you ask, just like Kennedy's children, Brother Todd's children, it will be done for you. This is what Jesus meant, that his joy may be in you, giving us what you want. Every time you ask the Lord for something, and when you receive it, Jesus is happy. Because you are happy. Okay, now, we see the following. As a result, as a result, let's go back. Let's go back. Yeah, there you go. As a result, Jesus said that your joy may be full. You see that? That your joy may be full or complete. Now, our children's joy is made full as we provide for them. They are happy. They are exceedingly happy. They are jumping. They are happy. You see? Now, our joy is made full as Christ provides for us. Now, you see, brothers and sisters, God wants each and every one of you to be happy. Okay? To be joyful. Amazing it. Amazing, isn't it, that the God of this universe wants me to be happy. A small guy, <laughs> a small person, he wants me to be happy. Now, here's the problem. I will tell you the problem, my dear brothers and sisters. The problem is many people really don't know how to be happy. God wants you to be happy, but many of us do not know how to be happy. Now, here's a survey of what makes people happy. A survey I got from Ipsos.com. A survey in the COVID era from 2020 until, I think, mid of this year. And this is what makes people happy according to the survey. Okay. According to the survey, this is what makes people happy in the COVID era. If my physical health and well-being are okay. If I have a good health, I'm happy. If I have a good mental health and well-being, I am happy. If my relationship with my parents and partner and spouse are okay, I am happy. If I'm feeling my life has meaning, I am happy. If I have a good relationship with my children, I am happy. If my living conditions are good, 
I am happy if my personal safety and security are not threatened. I am happy. And so on and so forth. And look at number 11. When people have more money, they are happy. Okay? All right? Okay. Now, now before COVID, I did a, a research before COVID. And the top three, the top three things of what makes people happy, number one, health. Health. As you can see, no wonder why in the COVID era, health is in the top two, physical and mental health. Number two is relationship. Relationship there uh, has meaning, relationship with partner, relationship with children. Okay. And number three, before COVID, money. Number three. Now, look at where money is. In the COVID era, money is number 11. But unfortunately, my dear brothers and sisters, there is nothing there that says relationship with God. See? These are what makes people happy in the COVID era. And before COVID, the top three, relationship, health, and money. And there is nothing that says about relationship with God, probably in the top ten. You know? Again, what does this survey tell us? Now, pay attention to this. I want you to pay attention. Now, we will do some something. Now, you see? There is a bit of change. There is the word if. Now, here is the problem. If my physical health and well-being are declining, if I am physically ill, terminally sick, will you be happy? Will you be happy? No. If I have a mental problem, will you be happy? No. If my relationship with my partner and my spouse are on the rocks, breaking up, are you happy? No. If I don't have no sense of uh, purpose in life, nothing to live for, will you be happy? No. If I have a bad relationship with my children, broken relationship with my children, are you happy? No. If my living conditions are not okay, are you happy? No. If my personal safety and security are threatened, if I don't feel secure anymore, even at night, even when I walk down the streets, I feel threatened. Will you be happy? No. And so on and so forth. Number 11. If you don't have money, will you be happy? Yes? Of course, no. Of course. No, I won't. No. Now, are you trying to see where I'm going? No. <laughs> now, you know the problem is we are truly unhappy because we put our happiness where a condition applies. You get that? You are truly unhappy. We are truly messed up because we put our happiness where a condition applies. You get the point? You get the point? Our happiness will be just temporary. You will be happy, of course, when you have money. Of course, you will be happy. But those are temporary. Those are temporary. And soon, it will be threatened. It will be threatened. Your money will soon be gone. You will all use up your money. When our happiness is dependent on the happening of a, an event or a situation. Now, if all these things that we talk about will truly make you happy, how come the rich and famous? How come the rich and famous? How come those that are powerful commit suicide? Huh? They do. How come the rich and famous becomes miserable if all those things can make you happy? See? Now, let's make things a bit more interesting. Okay? Now, if you have more money, 
Okay? Oh, dollars. Back home. That's big. Times 60. <laughs> One dollar, 60 pesos. Okay? You know, when I'm um, with me and my sister, I go in the store. I am converting two dollars, Brother Kennedy, uh, the corn, three for two dollars. I told him, oh, that's expensive. That's 120 pesos. You can buy 10 pesos for three corns, 15 pesos, three corns in the Philippines. You know, but I am in the U.S. <laughs> now, if you have more money, but don't have good health, you're always sick. Are you happy? Are you happy? Are you happy? No. But people say money will make you happy. Now, oh, family. Wonderful family. Now, if you have your family with you, but you don't have money, you don't have money to spend for them, your children are all starving. They are all dying because you don't have food on the table. That's why many people resort to robbery, resort to crime so that they can feed their family. Now, if you have your family with you but don't have money to feed them, are you happy? No. But they say family will make you happy. Right? Now, Meaningful job. Oh, they say that high-paying job will make you happy. Okay? They say if you have a meaningful job, it will make you happy. Now, what if you don't have a love life? You're all alone. You have nothing to share. Your joys. Right? When you come home, you're sitting by yourself. Nothing to share your joy, your happiness, whatever happens in the office. You know, that's why some people go to the red district area to get some temporary pleasure. But they say, job can make you happy. It's not. It's not. Right? Now, Can you tell the person again? I told you, we will be doing this more often. Can you tell the person beside you, rejoice? Rejoice, brother. Rejoice. Rejoice. Now, I've heard before coming here, you know, that East Foothill congregations, the brothers and sisters here, are good singers. And I found it to be true. Last week, wow. And today? You know, Brother Kennedy, he was like rocking me to sleep. But actually, it's good. Now, again, rejoice. Now, can we sing? Can we sing? I know all of you love to sing. Can we sing? Do you know the song, Rejoice in the Lord Always? Without looking at the songbook? Yeah, I know you know that song from the heart. Okay. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Okay, okay, okay. When we sing rejoice, they say smile. Smile. Okay. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Come on. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. His mercy in everlasting rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
Amen. Amen. You see, you have your lungs all. Right. Now, rejoice in the Lord. You know why we sing that song? Because Apostle Paul told us to rejoice in the Lord. Right? Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. You see here, Apostle Paul is telling you and I to rejoice in the Lord. Emphasizing to fellow believers in Philippi to rejoice in the Lord. Do you know where Apostle Paul was when he wrote these words? He was in prison. He was in prison. How can someone in prison be telling those outside the prison to rejoice while he himself in a, situa in a bad situation? You see? The Apostle Paul emphatically tells us, rejoice in the Lord. We are not to put our joy on material things. Now, I'll tell you again. Where are you to rejoice? Where? In the Lord. Amen. In the Lord. Now, he was in prison. Now, while Paul was in prison, he continuously tells all the brethren outside to rejoice in the Lord always. And he said, again, I say rejoice. Paul was empathic. And he was telling that our joy is in the Lord and not found anywhere else. Now, can I go back to Adam and Eve? Can I go back to Adam and Eve? God puts everything in order for Adam and Eve because God wants Adam and Eve to be happy. Right now, okay, the problem, I'm sorry, the problem with Adam and Eve is they fell into the temptation. They fell into the scheme of the devil believing that real happiness is in power. That real happiness is in authority. That real happiness is in wisdom. Because why? Because they last for being like God. If you will read Genesis chapter 3. That's what they have in mind. They will be like God. So they last for that power. They last for that being like God mentality. They totally ignore and acknowledge that the real source of everlasting happiness is from God. Adam and Eve thought that real happiness can be found anywhere else. A huge mistake. Sorry. Who's calling me? My wife is calling me. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Now, when we ignore and fail to acknowledge that the real source of everlasting happiness is God, you know, we will never be truly happy. We will never be truly happy. Okay. Now, Jesus, 100% correct. When he said, do not store up treasures here on earth where moth eats and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in. Jesus knew that real happiness is not of this world. That is why he advises us not to store up treasures here on earth. He advises us to store up treasures where? In heaven. What he meant by that is that not to put our happiness, our joy on material things where it can be destroyed and be stolen. Okay? It brings only temporary happiness. But he advises us to store up treasures in heaven. Now, look who's talking. Who's talking here? Jesus Christ. He knows what he's talking about because he comes from heaven. Okay? There, that's where he is. So if I were you, if I were you, take my advice. I'll take his word for it. Yeah, I'll take his word for it. Now here's the real deal. Here's the real deal. When, when this so-called, you know, earthly things failed us in our pursuit of real happiness, what do you do? What do normally people you know, do? When your pursuit of happiness failed you, what do you do? You lose hope. Right? You lose hope. You get tired of living. You know, I'm tired of living. I want to end myself. Okay? You get tired of living. You'll blame God. 
and you lose your faith. You know, funny thing is, my dear brothers and sisters, funny thing is, you lose your faith when you really have none in the first place. You get that? You blame God when God has nothing to do with your unhappiness. Right? We blame God. God, why, why am I so miserable? You blame God where God has nothing to do with your misery. You are the one who puts yourself there in the first place. It's your choice. It's your decision. Right? But nonetheless, that is what is really happening. Now, let's take a look at this. Whatever happens, whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, remember this, whatever happens, rejoice in the Lord. Wow, you get that? Rejoice in the Lord. I never get tired of telling you these things, and I do it to safeguard your faith. Now, before the famous Philippians 4.4, by Apostle Paul that we read a while ago and we sang a while ago, Paul already made mention about rejoicing in the Lord. Philippians chapter 3, verse 1, part of the scripture reading. Now, he's telling the brethren that whatever happens, whatever happens, whatever circumstances you are in right now, just like what they are in many, many years ago, maybe there's tribulations, sufferings, pain, problems, you know, trials. Apostle Paul said, rejoice in the Lord. Okay. And you know why? What is the reason why Paul said rejoice in the Lord? Because he never kept tired of telling us this. The reason is to safeguard your faith. To safeguard your faith. Now, Apostle Paul is telling us today, though we are suffering, you have pains, you have troubles, whatever it is, I do not know, even struggling with sin right now, he doesn't want us to lose sight of God. He does not want you, like them, in his time, to lose your faith. He was telling all the brethren, all the people back then to rejoice in the Lord because he wants to safeguard their faith. Even though you are suffering, you must think of the Lord. Even though you have problems right now, you must think of the Lord. You must rejoice in the Lord. He said, whatever happens, whatever happens. Because all other things are temporary. Do you agree? All other things are temporary. But Christ is eternal. When you put your happiness in something that is temporary, it will fail you sooner or later. But if you put your happiness in something that is eternal forever, it will never be lost. Amen? That's why Apostle Paul said, whatever happens, rejoice in the Lord. Don't lose sight, don't lose sight of God. Don't lose your faith, but continue having faith in God. That is why Paul said again, rejoice in the Lord. It is by only finding joy in the Lord where we can truly fight off the scheme of the devil now, who is trying so hard to rob us of our happiness. And Apostle Paul said, rejoice in the Lord so that you will keep and safeguard your faith. My dear brothers and sisters, God wants you to be truly happy. Now, one last time. Can you tell the person beside you, brother, sister, rejoice in the Lord, whatever happens. Rejoice in the Lord, brother Kennedy, whatever happens. For those who are watching in Zoom, rejoice in the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters and friends, whatever happens. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Now, next week, Lord's will, we will continue our part two of the happy series. Yeah. So better be here again next week or you will miss me.
Uh, just kidding. Now, those that are in Zoom, um, if you can, those that are in Zoom, if you can, uh, come in person if you can. We want to we want to see you in person. We want to shake your hands. We want to uh, embrace you and feel the warmth of your presence. And uh, if there be amongst you here that feel unhappy, if anyone amongst you here feel unhappy, or there is something bothering you about your faith, can I encourage you? Can I encourage you to come forward? Can I encourage you to come forward and let the congregation pray for you? And you will feel that you will have, or that you have a family here in all of us. And those who want to accept the Lord and be baptized in, in Jesus' name, come forward. And we will definitely make you feel that you have a family here in all of us. And finally, keep those smiles hanging. Because you all look good with all those smiles. God bless you all. Good morning.